welcome to another episode of Fit Chicks Radio. I am your host, Alice, and I am welcomed by one of my close friends, I would say now. She's got a bit of a lengthy intro to get through because she's achieved a lot in her last, I would say, I think it's 10 years that we were talking about the other day. Um, so yes, I would like to intro IFBB Bikini Pro, uh, Summer Bernard, and she is also, I'm going to run through, I've got a good list here. Um, beauty fit athlete, right away athlete, team peach coach, one of the head coaches along with our friend Tracy, um, and mother of Lily. I have to say <laughs> that in there. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Alice. <laughs> How are you going today? Yeah, really good, babe. Really good. It's Friday, so getting close to the end of the week. It's always um, good when you get through one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> get through another week. Exactly. And I'm, you know, thankfully we're both, you know, pretty flat out at the moment and summer's um, just started actually working, you know, actually back in the gym, which you haven't done for a while. So that's, how's that all going? I mean, tell us about what you're doing at the moment in terms of work. Yeah, well, so I'm working out of Rebo Fitness in Northbridge and um, I just decided to go back to personal training again. Um, look, like the industry has changed so much. So when I first initially started doing personal training, I was helping a lot of people and that was for weight loss. Um, that's when I first started getting into competing. So I was very, very driven. But now with everything, the way that it's changed, there's so many people that want to compete now. And I just wanted to kind of get back to that and actually be training people for more specific things. Um, because I think that they're, they're, most of the time they're a bit more driven um, because yeah. they have those set specific goals. And I just really enjoy working with people and stuff like that in doing that. So yeah. You haven't done PT since I've known you. I think I've known you now for like four years and you were always pretty much at Muscle Works when I met you. And yeah. um, so did you actually start out getting into the fitness industry with your PT back, like back before that? I did when, okay, so I did my PT in 2002. So that's how long ago it was that I started. <laughs> I'm still in high school. my age. <laughs> You look young. <laughs> yeah, so it has. Yeah, it, it was a long time ago that I did it, and um, I was working back in the day when it was Zest, and back in the day when there was a Zest in Short Hill, which is now, um, what is it called now? Is it is it Flex still? Um, Chewett Hill. I don't even know out that way. I think it might be Flex. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that used to be a women's only gym. So that's how long ago it was. It was forever. And for the people that obviously don't live in Western Australia, Zest has then changed to Fitness First, a lot of them, and then now Good Life. So we don't have Fitness First anymore. So there's been a lot of change over the last few years. And I think it's crazy, like, thinking about it now. You've been in the fitness industry for over 10 years, and you were in it before Bikini even was Bikini. Like, yeah. Well, there wasn't – for IFBB, there was no Bikini when I first started. So um, the first competition that I did was actually with IMBA because there was no Bikini and, like, there was no way – I could just step straight up and do figure because I just, yeah, was had no muscle. Like, I had nothing, you know, back then. How old were you when you actually did your first show? Uh, I think I might have been 20 or 21, I think I was, yeah. yeah. About 21, yeah. So that was I NBA figure. Yeah, it was, the, it was actually Olympia. They actually had an Olympia here and it was at the um, – where the hold oh, at the convention center, so but in the big auditorium, so yeah, that was a while ago. <laughs> and that would be the old convention center, which now I've got the new one as well. Yeah, that's it. So much so has much changed. So, cool. so, I guess back to the competing side of things. I mean, now the big thing that everyone knows you for now, and especially that's blown up the last couple of years, is now that you've switched over from figure to bikini. And mm-hmm. I would say, like, I mean, you already had a big following before when you were doing figure. But ever since you've done bikini, it's almost like I think bikini is a bit more recognisable. Would you agree with that? It's a bit more relatable maybe for girls. Do you think that's why? What yeah, was well, your reason? It's definitely became more popular. Um, I think that bikini has done so much for the sport because of the fact that it is kind of more achievable for mm-hmm. girls. Um, obviously, marketing purposes, it, it tends to work a lot more as well. Um, but, yeah, things definitely have changed myself for me um, since switching to bikini. But I don't know if that's just also the transition of what's going on in the fitness industry at the moment. Like, it seems to be just so big and just the way that social media is now. Like, it's 
it's it's huge you know and it's yeah it, it's hard I find it hard to manage like I find it hard to be able to do all of my work pay attention to my girls and then do that on top and you know post, like yeah <laughs> you want to keep people as informed as possible and um but it's finding the time to do so as well and um yeah when I first started I had like a Facebook page but like yeah it was nothing like it is now like nothing. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's a big thing people want to know a lot about how you create followers and how you generate you know, mm. people to actually follow and be interested in what you're doing because there's so many girls doing the same thing these days. Everyone's trying to break it in the industry, which is really good. Like you said, it's a positive thing. Women are being empowered. Women are supporting each other, I feel, which is really good. But yeah. how did you actually get – I mean, your Facebook page is a massive following. How did that actually blow up compared to, say, like your Instagram and stuff? Yeah, it's, it's uh-huh. really huge. I honestly don't know, babe. Like, I just, I think it was just me posting. And I mean, like, I'm like a one post a day person. That's what I am. I've never, the only time I've actually, like, paid for things has only been when I, um, like, a long time ago when I was paying, um, wanted to advertise my programming and stuff. Yeah. And then that's the only time that I actually, like, paid for things. I never, like, paid for, like, ads or anything like that. And now it's, yeah, it has gotten... A lot bigger and honestly like I think that all you have to do is be yourself and just share exactly what you're doing with people and you know those then people are going to follow you so yeah, and yeah. people react, relate if you're a real person you know if you're posting mm. photos I love to post you did the other day where you had no makeup on and it was yeah. it was beautiful and I was like well that's what people want to see that you're not done up 24 7 you don't walk around like that it's unrealistic for women and they're looking at you if you did post photos like that all the time going I can't achieve that. I'm not going to follow her. Like, it's yeah. very unrealistic. So, I think, yeah. You know, like I get, you know, you, you look at social media all the time and there is a lot of people and they're posting and they're always fit, fit, fit. And I try not to do that as well. Like, if I, when I go, like, I'm now finally in my off season, like, it's not always going to be fit pictures because that's not realistic. Let's face it. Like, we've all been through our issues with that. Like, you can't stay like that all the time. No, and that's, I mean, it's great seeing that variety in posts as well. I mean, you don't want to click on the same person and see the same thing. They're shredded abs every day. I mean, it's motivating to a certain extent, but then it's like, well, why are you actually following them? Is it informative? Is it educational? You know, it's all those things as well. And that's why I think that your posts obviously generate a lot of following, a lot of, you know, people really respect what you're doing as well and why I think it's fantastic that you've just started up the new business with Tracy. So, can you just tell us like a little bit what Team Peach is? It kind of came about and now this term, the peach, has taken over from the booty. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really the new word for the butt this year. I don't know what it's going to be next year, but peach is it at the moment. So what are you guys doing at the moment? Tell us about Tracy also. We're going to have her on in a few weeks too. Okay, well, it's funny how the actual thing came about. I literally had a dream because Tracy kept on tagging Team Peach. I had a dream that she did um like started this business and I was like oh my gosh I had this dream and she was do you want to do it and I was like yeah and then we just kind of collaborated everything together so we both have our services so obviously we've got Tracy who does all the hair the makeup the tanning the fashion side of things and then me with all of the training and nutrition side and we just thought look we'll gather it together it's good for competitions and now we're branching out doing things like photo shoots for people so you know like I was saying before, like some people aren't really that driven when it comes to goals. And I do honestly feel that a lot of girls start training and they're like, I'm going to compete. Like that's yeah, what every yeah. girl's thought process is now. It's just because they, they train they have to. and want to compete. And it's not necessary, but I know they're just doing it for a goal. So that's what I thought. If we can start doing these photo shoots and stuff, it gives people something to train for. So yeah, that's kind of what we're about, I guess. And, yeah, um, it's nice having it all in one area. Like, I mean, obviously, like I online coach and do similar things to you, but I don't have that connection with, you know, tanning and all that. And people come to us. They come to you. They come to me. They come to girls all the time and go, who do I go to for comp tan? Who do I go to for this? And it's so nice being able to just point people in the right direction and there's not enough people in the industry to cover it. Like, to be honest, especially with hair and makeup, and it's like bikinis even as well. Like everyone wants to know where we go. Obviously, we yeah. go to Claire because we love Claire. Um, yeah. <laughs> give creative bikinis a little plug. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's nice having that. I And it's funny because a lot of people ask me, and I probably you get asked it as well, if the industry is bitchy between like say me and you, we pretty much run the similar business. We're both yeah. online coaches. Yet yeah. I have you on my program and I'm promoting your business. 
So yeah. it's funny, isn't it, how – and you send girls to me and we do vice versa if we feel like there's something that maybe isn't our area of expertise. Yeah. So how do you feel about that in terms of, like, women in the industry? Well, I honestly – I don't think – I think people have been in the industry for a long time are very respectful for each other and things like that. And, like, I honestly put out exactly what I want to get back. So I always have the utmost respect for everyone because I would expect the same in return. Um, I, don't, I haven't came across anyone that has been bitchy or anything like that in any way whatsoever. Not, not yet. Not that I can think of people that are high caliber. Like, I mean, even I had someone, like, very, like, big in the industry – come to me and tell me when you know something had happened or he heard something do you know what I mean like people just do have a lot of respect so I think yeah it's I, I don't really think that it's that way at all no I feel like it's more people that aren't involved in the industry putting a negative spin on it that don't actually have any idea what's going on like you know people that comment negatively on a post that you might put out or something like that they're yeah. usually people that aren't even involved in the fitness industry in any any aspect like do you yeah, notice that guess. with yours I guess everyone that's in the industry um, understands and realise how important it is to have that support, um, so that's why they're not that way, so I guess, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so much business out there for coaching that people don't need to feel like the need to take on every client because we wouldn't have lives, like, you know, you, you get busy enough as it is, so, um, yeah, I think that's a big misconception that girls think that we're not all friends and that we all don't hang out and share business ideas and share all this stuff, and I think it's really good... Because I have a lot of coaches, like young girls, like who have just started. I had a year 12 girl email me the other day and she wants to come do some mentoring with me. And I was yeah. like, that's so sweet. Like it's nice for them to hear as well that when they get into the industry, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be people are going to be there to support you. And it's, I think, really important to have mentors. Who were kind of some of your mentors coming through the fitness industry? Like who kind of got you to where you are today? Um, I guess uh, – I. In regards to competing, like, um, it would have been probably my first coach that I ever had, Chris. He um, is not in the industry or anything anymore. I'm actually uncertain what he does now. But he was just extremely supportive. And the way that he was to me, like, because that um, coming to that first show is when I had actually lost my father, like, a couple of months before. This is my first figure show. And he was literally like a dad. And he was so... Like, I guess borderline overprotective, but he really looked out for me in all aspects. And now I do carry that on with all my clients. Like I'm very similar to what he was. That's that's how I am. So like I guess I kind of, yeah, I just understood straight away exactly, you know, how it should be and how important it is to have that support. So ideally, I would say him, um, definitely Lane, like what I learned from him just changed my life like it's insane like I cannot imagine where I would be right now if it wasn't to have him as a coach like he was incredible and you know that as well like yeah it just completely opened my eyes to everything so definitely those two I would say yeah yeah I think yeah it was amazing having him on last week and you know like even what he's doing now it's the same thing like he's a busy coach but he's still pushing people to other coaches and helping other people grow in the industry and again he's probably a mentor to more of us now than a coach um but we still have that positive relationship with him so i mean besides those two i mean i know you've done a lot of this stuff on your own where mm -hmm. with now you're working with tracy obviously is it still nice because as a personal trainer sometimes like in your actual gym where you're working do you have a supportive network around you or do you just kind of go in and do your own thing at the moment i kind of just go in and do my own thing at the moment because like look like i think i'm, I'm busy enough as well um so yeah i'm kind of just like every day it's kind of like my day goes like go to the gym train come home sit on my computer and just deal with all my online clients so I think maybe because now I've just started, it's still trying to find that kind of balance of, of everything. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of like me out there uh, doing my thing. Tracy's still doing her PT course. So hopefully once, like, she's got that up and running and, and then if she decides to go into the gym, then she'll be starting to train some clients as well, which would be really good to kind of pass some on to her. So, yeah. yeah. So you're still training clients and doing the online as well or just online? Yeah, both. both. Both, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I kind of want to get um, a little bit more into kind of your backstory from last year of things that went on because you had a big break from competing, which I'm sure people are aware of, after you did a figure show. I think it was – when was the last time you competed in figure? Was it in the States? 
was it? Yeah, he was in the States, yeah. Yeah, so it was in the States and then you had a break. For how long was it between that and changing over and doing all the big – it was a year and a half? Yeah, it would have been about a year and a half that it was, yeah, because I competed – um when was that I'm pretty sure it was at the end of the year and then it was like the following start the yeah, next year or something like that yeah it was a very good year I think it would have been about 2012 maybe somewhere around there yeah, yeah. so then like for those of you who aren't aware Summer was IFBB figure pro got her pro card actually that way and then everyone kind of didn't know what was going on and then like a year and a half later she's on stage as a bikini pro so what kind of um obviously number one what made you change from figure to bikini um, like when we discussed earlier before, we said that, you know, obviously when I first started, there wasn't an IFBB bikini. Um, I always mentally had in my head that I wanted to go and compete overseas. That's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to compete as an IFBB pro up there with all my idols. That's always what I wanted to do. That was in my head, like as it is now for many girls, but being in my head, like. 10 years ago, like it just, you know, not many people actually thought of doing that. So it's definitely more of a thing that girls want to do now. Um, but, yeah, so that was always in the back of my mind. Look, I went up to figure because I was looking at these girls and I was like, wow, like that is awesome, like what they do to their bodies. And I was really into it at the time. But then as the years have gone on, I've just found myself more – inclined to like the look of the bikini girls especially you know like Natalia Mello the way that she looked yeah, and I was like amazing. wow you know she's got that muscle but I just like the whole um and, yeah the sex the appeal and everything like that or the more the the marketability as well and look like the main thing like when I was coming into that last prep I was looking at myself the coach at the time that I had I had was looking more like a bikini model. Like yeah. I did lose I a lot of muscle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was like overtraining and stuff, like definitely. And I was starting to look more like a bikini model. And I honestly didn't mind, besides the fact that I was way too lean. But um, I didn't mind how I looked, and you know, I just found myself more inclined. And then when I went on stage in America, they were said to me, you know, you got great shape, but in order for you to be competitive, you're gonna have to put on about five kilos of muscle, and me putting on five kilos muscle is, is so much for my body. And I was like, look, this is going to mean years of training. Like I'm going to be competing and maybe placing what when I'm 40 or something or like late 30s. And like, look, I've been in this industry for ages and I'm not saying that, you know, like the last show was my last show that I ever did, but it's definitely something that, like, it's kind of like running its course for me now, you yeah. know. Like, you feel um, like you kind of ticked off the boxes, boxes. you wanted to do. Yeah, like, I, I still love it and, like, oh, to be on Olympia stage, gosh, that would be a dream. Like, definitely I would love to get there, but I've got to be a bit, like, uh, I guess uh, realistic in a way, but then also um, I've just, like, got my business and I'm so passionate about my clients that even in my last prep, even though I did so well, like, all my thought was into them. It wasn't really into myself. So, yeah, I think that, it. like, I love being in bikini. I find it definitely a lot easier on my body as well. So I think it was definitely the right move anyway. And, I mean, you, like, are awesome on stage to watch for people. And I think, do you feel like you get to show a bit more of your personality in bikini than what you did in figure? Yeah, absolutely, definitely. And um, <laughs> I had someone tell me that once. When I did a bikini show and they said, never um, leave bikini, like you're just, you're suited to that. You know, I had a judge telling me, it's just like, you know, you just your personality, the way you are on stage. So yeah, I think it definitely fits a lot more and I feel a lot more comfortable with doing that now. Yeah. yeah. And you looked, I mean, for those of you who don't know, Summer obviously plays six at the Arnold Classic Australia. Um, was the top placing Australian. Usually the Americans come over and just dominate. So how, well, how did you feel? Like, I remember, like, looking at you that day and, like, how did you feel, like, up on stage getting your name called out in sixth place? It, it's funny because, like I said, uh, everyone said to me, I was like, I honestly feel like I won. Like, I pretty much won that show. <laughs> you were the Australian, so you won. Yeah. I was like, I pretty much feel like I won. Yeah. Honestly, it was the best feeling. But even before I knew my placing and walking out on that stage and having people cheering for you, that was like it. I was like, literally, I could walk off stage right now and not even know the results. And I just, I felt so amazing because I've been competing in America for so long and no one, like, no one knows who you are. Yeah. Nah, yelling. You'd be like, yay. But it was honestly, like me, it was... And me and Attila in America in Sacramento. <laughs> yeah. And like, 
you know, and it was just a strange, uh, a different feeling, but even more so just knowing that these were like people that literally had just been following me and stuff. Yeah. And so many people were yelling for me. I was just like, it, that that made my day, you know. It's that really humbling, really, isn't it? Just having random people come up that you have never even known what's going on in their life, but they follow yours. And it's like, yeah, so, so such a nice, warm feeling, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's, it's, and it's so funny because people were like, Oh, I bet you hear this all the time. And whenever you get sweet messages, nice. like, honestly, <laughs> like it, it makes your day. Like, seriously, it, it's like, okay, it makes it worth it for me. Like, all this <laughs> makes it worth it. Yeah, and all the hard work that you do, and if you can just have one person tell you a nice story about how you've helped their life, it makes it all. And that's why you've probably got that split decision of do I compete again or don't I? But yeah. I mean, either way in your career, you're still going to be doing other things and you're still going to be doing photo shoots and bits and pieces. It's not like you're just like you stop competing and that's it. Like that's what people have to remember. Competing takes up a lot of time, just like the focus on that date, the travel, if you're going overseas, all of that. Whereas you can still achieve a lot without actually stepping on stage. And I think that's a big, important message. Like, Well, that's it, I mean, you, you can only have a look at the, a lot of the um, the girls over in the US, a lot of even are competitors and they're just your fitness models and everything like that. As long as you're still living that healthy and fit lifestyle, like um, I think that I actually like, I mean, I, uh, I still want to definitely do a show like next year. Like I definitely plan to compete at the start of next year. I'm really hoping that I do get into Arnold's, like I sh that I should already qualify because I would love to do that show again. So definitely going to compete again next year. But I really actually look forward to the day where I do hang up my shoes and that I show people how to just be fit and healthy for life and yeah. to set other little goals and stuff like that as well. So I mean, I love, like, like what you said, I love following people like Ashley Horner um, you know, she's a mum that still leads a really healthy lifestyle. Obviously, even people like Paige Hathaway is like the biggest fitness model, you know, that people know of. She doesn't even compete like anymore. Like, no one cares. Like, it's not really the be all and end all. Like, who are your big um, idols in terms of females that you follow in social media and stuff that motivate you? Oh, honestly, like it would probably be mostly the girls that I've competed with because I really love sitting there and, and watching like how they're going. Like, no, I mean, there's like, would would be one of my really good friends now and um I just love following her and seeing what they're up to and certainly with um Stephanie Mahoy as well um India like I just love following those girls and just seeing I think that's more because I think like I know them on a yeah. personal basis and stuff but like Jenna Renee she's always been a favorite of mine and she hasn't competed in a long time yeah. but I just love watching her like always photo inspo she's amazing like yeah. she's absolutely gorgeous and She's on the super thin side, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that sometimes it and doesn't even. And you look even at an Natalia Mello, and she's like complete opposite, but so inspiring. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's yeah, it's good to. I think it's good to kind of follow a range of people, and then realize that you know not everyone's the same, and they do fall into different categories, right? Like yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, at what stage you're at in your life, because you're competing at the moment still you're finding the, your fellow competitors inspiration but maybe when you one day want to have a kid and become a mum then you might follow more people like Ashley or people who yeah. do that side of things so it's all relevant to like your goals and what you're doing I think and yeah. um, so I guess what I want to touch on is go like a little bit deep with some of the issues that were going on last year now I get asked a lot of questions about it I know that you do I know that Nina does I know a lot of the girls do about hormones yeah. um, it's a big topic now I'm no expert you're no expert but we know enough um, for our own personal research, that sort of thing. Um, so I guess what we want to say is when you're listening to, obviously these are our personal opinions, our own personal things that have helped us. Yeah. Um, so when you had that big break between competing, I know that that was to do with um, metabolism issues, hormones, why you had that time off after that show. You didn't figure where you lost a lot of muscle. So for those of you who don't know, can you just kind of give us a little bit of a backstory as to why you had that break and why it took so long to get back on stage again with, with issues? Yeah, well, um, sorry, my dog's attacking me. <laughs> Get Lily. Come here. <laughs> Lily and my dog Buffy have not met yet. They went to have a play date, so we're going to have one very soon. Hi, Lily. Buffy's outside because she's a brat. <laughs> I'm one of those horrible owners that lets her lick my face. Yeah, well. I am too. We're gross. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Lily. <laughs> she can hear you and she's like, where the hell is she? <laughs> where okay. the crazy dog ladies. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, obviously 
I competed, I did lose like quite a bit of muscle and it was because I had adrenal fatigue, like my hormones, my body was all kinds of stuffed up. Um, it wasn't really so much just the physical, but it was a mental aspect as well. Um, I went through a really tough time and I was feeling a lot of stress and pressure, which did definitely affect um, my hormones as well. And I found that as soon as I got into a better headspace, that's when things actually started improving that and finding a really good doctor. Um, so yeah, just after, I think it was just a little bit too much for my body. After a year I was, had photo shoots and comps and just this and that coming up. Um, I wasn't ever getting any rest, um, mentally or physically as well. Um, I knew something was wrong after I actually went and had a photo shoot for oxygen and then I came back and um, I just did not feel right. I went to the doctors and, you know, I went to a normal GP and I was saying, can you, can, I need to get my bloods done. I said, there's something wrong with my hormones. Can I get my estrogen checked? And she was like, oh, do you have your time of the month? Sorry, guys, listening. And I was like, yes, that's all fine. And she goes, oh, your estrogen's fine. You don't need to get tested because that was happening. Anyway, I was so unhappy with her. I went to another doctor, got my estrogen tested. I had no estrogen. I had no testosterone. Um, I had all sorts of issues. They thought I had an autoimmune disease. My cortisol, as it is always high with people that train, but mine was just off the scale. Liver problems, kidney problems, just all things that had been a result of the adrenal fatigue, which had um, like stopped my hormones from producing correctly. Like That's pretty much what happened. So I had to have time off. I had to start eating food. I had to eat enough food for my hormones to produce correctly because I think that that's um, a lot of things that girls don't realize is that it's all good and well to be on these lean diets and look good all the time. But if your body is not like got enough food to produce its hormones correctly, then you're screwed. So especially, it's just going to screw you up in a long run. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think that, you know, I had a, a one person say to me all the time, um, one time, and he said, you know, it's not about the strongest that survive, it's all about how much your body can actually handle. So it's like how long your body can handle Until this. Until it breaks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And my body did, it got to breaking point. So I just had that time off. Um, I got out of the situation that I was in. So mentally, I started feeling better. And I actually like let training be kind of the second thing in my life. I enjoyed myself. I went out with friends, um, like things that I had not done in such a long time. And mentally having that time off, although I was still training and everything, like it, it was really good for me. It was good for me not going, oh my gosh, when's my next show? I have to get up and do my fasted cardio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just things like that. And so it was just so much better. And look, uh, the um, before I did the comp in the US, like I did a 20-week prep and it, it took a long time. Like I ended up losing 10 kilos. So I did have quite a lot of weight to lose. People probably didn't realize how much weight I did put on, but I had like 10 kilos to lose. So I did drop a bit. Um, and now I'm happy to be able to do all this correctly. Like after learning so much from Lane, like I actually know that I need to reverse diet now. And have you ever had a, like when you did, I know you did a lot of shows probably in about eight years, you did them like back to back pretty much. Like, yeah. did you ever have any like processes of reverse dieting or like having off season calories or like, did you have anything in place with your last comps before you worked with Lane? No, never really. Babe. Like all the people that I kind of prepped with would be, it'd be like literally you do a prep and then that's it. So it would just be me putting on weight and just eating lots of food. It wouldn't be in, in at any plan. And I think that that's the reason why a lot of coaches make mistakes now is that they do not give any um, post-comp care to their clients. They literally get them ready for the show and they're like, okay, cool. See, See you later. later. Got your money. You've done your show. Yeah. Chat to you when you put on some weight and then we get ready for your next one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, you know, uh, okay, guys probably can get away with that a little bit more than what females can, but we can't. Like it's just. No, our hormones are a lot more sensitive to weight gain, to uh, diet manipulation, everything. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I, I've never had that guidance. So it was, um, yeah, even coming into that when I did have the hormonal issues I didn't have enough guidance then and that's probably the reason why I ended up getting up to 10 kilos and by then I was so far gone and that's when I did start working with Lane and he was just all about repairing my metabolism mentally I had to 
retrain my thinking so much and go like, you know what, someone just be comfortable with where you were. And I, I did, I had to embrace it and I embraced the curves. I did <laughs> like, I had no other choice and you know, like that's all you can do. And like, I just, I really want like the reason why I'm so passionate about what I do. And that's why the reason why I'm doing this full time is because I just want to convey that message out to girls and I want them to be more like that and just kind of realize that, it's not all competing. It's not all being lean all the time. It's it's health is like number one, like above everything, you know? Yeah, I 100% agree with you there. And it's getting away from, like we said before, like getting away from the fact that we don't walk around looking like, like look at us now. We don't walk around with comp tan and, you know, shredded yeah. abs all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, so I, mean, I think that's such an important topic to cover and, I think that girls need it. When you hire a coach especially, like we're not saying you need to get coached by us or any of that, but make sure that you've chat to your coach about what's going to happen after the show. So when you hire them, you say, okay, we've done the diet. What's in place afterwards? Do I keep paying you for another month of the coaching? What happens afterwards, you know? And um, like what else would you say to girls if they feel like, say, they're having hormonal issues? They're not sure because people do over-diagnose and freak out and go, oh, my God. So you need to be really careful with diagnosis. What do you think is the best way of going about, say, looking for a good doctor or and or getting some hormonal checks done? Um, I think you definitely have to find an endocrinologist. I think you're wasting your time with GPs because yeah. they don't – they lack the knowledge. They're not a specialist the right in that ones. area. Yeah. So I think that it's definitely worth going and finding a good endocrinologist. Look, like – one of I did have a very good doctor and he lost his license and the media blew that up big time, although he was helping a lot of people. I, and I, I'm not really... helping me too, yeah. Exactly, and it took me a long time to actually find a decent doctor and I think that that did have a lot come into play with that year and a half with me and when I finally got on top of that, I mean, look, she's incredible and... um. She's fully booked out, so I can't even recommend my clients to go there, but I have been advised of other people to go through with her. So if anyone's in WA and they want to contact me, I can put you in contact with this person who's also really good endo, but you've just got to find a, a specialist. Um, make sure that they do all the testing. It's not they're do, not just doing blood work, but they're doing like um, saliva testing as well. And I also got like hair analysis done. So it's all those other little ones because just your standard blood test isn't really going to be enough. Yeah. So for those people that don't know, what does saliva testing show up that obviously your blood work doesn't do like enough of? Um, well, you do get like it, it does all your, your sex hormones as well as doing like your cortisol and it's just more, um, it is a lot more accurate than just doing the blood readings. Um, you do it at periods throughout the day as well because obviously our hormones, especially our cortisol changes, yeah, throughout the day. So that's how it tests. It is probably one of the hardest tests I've ever done because spitting into a tube this much like takes like about half an hour, but it is definitely the most accurate. It's not covered by Medicare, which is unfortunate, but look, it's your hormone. So I think that it's, it's really worth getting checked out if you do feel as though you're having those issues. But even if you do feel like, you know, thinking that you've got adrenal fatigue and stuff, you just literally have to just hold back a bit. You need to just calm down, ease up on your training um, and make sure that your body is getting enough nutrients and you're getting enough rest. And I think that is the one thing that everyone fails the most at when they're having issues is they're just not getting enough sleep. Yeah, I think it's like we all want just like a Band-Aid solution and I know for me personally my big thing is sleep stress. Like if they are stuffed, all the other hormones, there's not a pill that I can pop that's going to fix my sleep and stress. No, so. That it's like, uh, you know, your hormonal treatments and getting some proper medication are necessary for certain people like yourself, people that have got quite severe issues, getting your estrogen and testosterone back on track. But there's so many other lifestyle factors that need to be accounted for. So besides obviously sleep, stress, in terms of nutrition, um, what are some nutritional things that you put in place? Obviously, we said eating more calories. Um, other things to do with food that you did hormonally to kind of assist with that in that period? I think it just more focusing on the fats as well. Um, I did increase my fats and making sure I'm getting good sources like 
coconut oil honestly probably be one of the best things that you can have especially with um yeah when you're having any hormonal issues that way um just finding out what's a good balance of like carbohydrates to fats and protein in your nutrition as well which i mean can be quite hard for you to figure out but you definitely want to make sure that you're having enough fats and i yeah. think that a lot of females aren't really having enough fats and it's um, actually saturated fats that people don't know that does the job of hormones yeah so um, basically, like your coconut oil, like you said, is an awesome saturated fat. So other co- other saturated fats are usually dairy, which a lot of people have dairy intolerances if they've got like PCOS and other issues going on. So your other ones are like your butter, even animal fats. So like not being scared to eat like fatty cuts of meat, you know, having a bit more red meat in your diet, which usually when you do a you know comp diet, it's like white meat, no fat, like all those things that you're cutting out to stuff your hormones up. So you imagine if. Someone like Summer who's been competing a while, you've been in the industry eight years, probably following those similar diets. Mm. Like your hormones have had eight years of being beaten up. Like, so yeah. there's someone out there, people out there are lucky that they probably haven't gone through those diets now that there's so much more information out there um, to help support those cell membranes with their saturated fats. So, I mean, for you now, has it made you more like interested in research and understanding about the body and nutrition side of things more than training now? Yeah, absolutely. Nutrition definitely something that interests me a hell of a lot more than what I did when I initially started. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing my nutrition stuff at the moment um, through Precision Nutrition. So that has been so informative. But honestly, like when I first got diagnosed, I bought so many books. <laughs> I bought heaps of books. I listened to several podcasts. Like I was going insane like with research and stuff. But I did have to find that balance because when you start doing so much research and looking into things, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, maybe it's this. Oh, maybe it's that. Like you tend to get a bit overwhelmed with information. So it's good to have that there and to kind of know, but just don't start going psycho self-diagnosing with everything. But, yeah, I've definitely looked up a heap more and um, definitely a lot more interested after having issues going on. And then especially because I get so many people that – will email me and, and talking about it as well, things that they think they're going through. Yeah, so I guess if they are going through those things, I mean, your top tips are obviously getting a good GP, getting some blood work done and or saliva testing, um, yeah. looking at like your day-to-day habits, your lifestyle, stress, cortisol. In terms of training, um, if you're feeling a little bit like that, is there anything you kind of question them on in terms of like cardio or weights? Like is there something they should back off from? Well, definitely in terms of the cardio thing, like, yeah, ugh, people shouldn't, I think people tend to be doing quite a lot of that. So I kind of tell them to cut back and maybe do two, three session maximum a week. Um, obviously, it's hard when people are going into shows and stuff, but if someone has got severe hormonal issues, I'll tell them probably not to even do the show because yeah. if you can't manage that, there's no way you should put your body through that. Yeah. Um, so definitely, yeah, backing off with your cardio and even like your weight training as well, babe, even if you doing two days on, have a day off and just treating it that way and just kind of being gentle with your body and just listening to it a bit more. Yeah. You've kind of got to know that fine line between am I just being lazy or does my body actually need a rest? Because most of the time your body actually does need a rest. Especially if you're someone that's very motivated and loves training and very hardcore. I mean, I know that me and you are both like that, that we just kind of go and push it when we should kind of go, okay, no, it's okay to have a day off and not feel guilty about having a day off. I know I used to feel guilty when I first started and listening to my body. Do you feel a bit the same now? You're in a place where you're a bit more comfortable having some downtime and having a bit of you time? Yeah, absolutely. Like, for example, last week, I just, it, I wasn't really feeling it so much in my body, but just mentally, like, I was like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm in on this at the moment. Like, I'm like, I don't really feel, every time I do a training session, it was always like a half a training session. So I was like, you know what? I'm having a week off. I went and did yoga. I went and did long runs and just things that helped me like clear my mental space. And I do feel a lot better and I don't feel guilty as well when I like miss things. Like I just kind of go, okay, you know, you just kind of, I guess I've got more of a hold and a better relationship with food now as well. So I'll be like, okay, just, you know, don't overdo it with the food. It's okay for you to have time out. So I think that that's probably the main thing when you have hormonal issues is your relationship with food can t- turn really ugly, you know, it can get quite bad. Yeah. And like, obviously you, you, we're telling people as well that we want you to help fix these hormones. We want you to eat more. We want you to train less. 
Mm. And we want you to maybe not compete or maybe just put your goals aside for a second, work on yourself. For someone that's mentally been so fixated on like getting on stage or getting shredded and that's like been their number one goal, like how much of a mental head fuck, like part of my French, is that going to be for someone? Like well, how do you get through that? That's exactly what I went through. Um, I had just done figure and that's when I'd made my mind, I was like, I'm going to do bikini. And I literally in six months time wanted to go and compete. And my doctor at the time is like, some are like, you can't compete. He goes, everything that you're doing at extremes at the moment has to stop. There is no extremes whatsoever. And for me mentally to get my head around that was really hard. And it was, I was like, am I ever going to be able to compete again? He goes, I don't know. He goes, if you don't get better, no way. And for me, like at the start, like that's all I heard was, oh my gosh, I'm not going to compete anymore. It wasn't you know, like your it body. Wasn't like some of you may not have children or you may not be living or healthy in a few years. Yeah. Your head was like compete, yeah. Hey, and it, it took me it took me a long time to mentally get over that and that's the reason why it did take me a little bit of time to actually tell people and for a long time I was like, do I even tell people this? And I was like, you know what, like I've always been open and I've told everyone so I was just like, you know, I'm just going to tell everyone what's going on. So that's the reason why I came out with it. It was it was hard and it was like mentally you think, oh, my gosh, are people going to – how are people going to look at you and everything like that. It's just – it's so, yeah, you feel like you're almost like a letdown. But I just I hope that – I don't want girls to ever feel the way that I did and to kind of realise that, you know, it's just – your health is your number one priority over a plastic trophy because, you know, that's – really what you're getting I know that you get so much more physical on a physical aspect and you just like there's no sense of achievement of how well it feels how good you feel when you get up on stage and you do well or even just getting up there but you've got to kind of put it in a perspective as well when it comes to your health and and like how did you feel this is a big one I guess this was one for me last year too feeling a lot healthier doing a show how did you feel like your Arnold's prep this year say compared to when you competed for figure when you actually stepped on stage mentally knowing you did a pretty healthy prep to like the healthiest you could possibly do with your hormones obviously not being perfect now compared to doing a prep where you know might not have been the healthiest like doing hours of endless cardio doing all that what was the actual feeling of achievement when that happened well I can tell you that I actually felt like I was on the planet, so it was actually good to be coherent because that time when I was actually in the stage, I was so incoherent and I didn't know, like, it, it was actually really bad. So, and it was full on, like, I was just, it, it was just go, 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 but that was my mentality at the time and it was all part of the adrenal fatigue and the cortisol my body was producing that I was just go, 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 and to be able to get up there and then, yeah, like, walk off stage and go, wow, like I actually could do this without killing myself because that's literally how it felt the last and time. And still so. be able to, you know, run a business, have a partner, do all those things yeah. without destroying everything else. Like that's how sometimes sometimes that happens when you compete. People ruin everything else that's positive in their lives because it takes over. Yeah, well, I definitely learned to kind of make it even more of a, a lifestyle and just something to kind of fit in my life and not take over. And that's a good feeling and that's how it should be. It shouldn't be something that completely takes over your life. Like I know that, I mean, okay, so I tell my clients the last week, this is all just comp yeah. now. Like The last that, month's different a bit, yeah. yeah. But the, the only, only reason why I say that is because mentally, like, that's how I want them to be and I don't want them to be stressed by outside things. Yeah. So it, it was a really good feeling and, um, like, yeah, another reason I guess why I just want to do this is because I want people to realise that there is a better way of doing things and you don't have to kill yourself and... You know, like I, I guess we're we're all just becoming more educated. That's what it's about. You know, back in the day when this all began and it was predominantly run by men. And I'm not saying that men don't know anything because, I mean, look at Lane, but it's just he's just so much more educated. And I just feel like how it got filtered down to girls, like it was girls never really competed. So it was like the girls were doing all the work that the men were and we just can't handle that, you know. And even like, I mean, 
for guys and girls. I feel like the old school mentality of gym is so much different to now. Like the old school mentality was like grind. You've got to keep grinding. You've got to keep doing your, you know, your three hours of cardio a day because that's what it takes to get on stage. You've got to like be tough as nails. Whereas now it's almost a bit more like you can actually have a life and have this as part of it, like you said. And it's funny because I think some people think that's lazy, but Mm. it's actually just smart and looking after yourself like don't feel guilty if you feel like you're going out and having a meal with your friends but you're making a really smart healthy choice off the menu like I mean we all go out a lot more now and a lot more comfortable in social situations even when we're prepping again maybe not like a week or two from a show but generally year round you're okay going out and having a meal like how did you feel before say if you were prepping like would you ever go out and have meals besides cheap meals where I know about your old cheap meals Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we won't even call that a cheat meal that was like a binge so yeah tell us a little bit about that actually yeah well yeah well when before I did like followed like um, flexible dieting and everything like that and I obviously used to have the cheat meal and that's the reason why like I I try to put it out there as much for people to follow that even though people think that we just eat crap all the time it's not like that at all because I used to have like a cheat meal, which I know a lot of people still do, but it wasn't a cheat meal. It was just a binge and it was just the fact that my body was lacking so much nutrition throughout the week that I just get to that point and I literally mentally couldn't switch off from eating. I would be full, but I would just keep on going. So yeah, it was, it would, they were really bad. And that's when I just knew that something had to stop and it's, it's an eating sort of within its own right, you know, like being like that and just feeling like, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to be able to eat again for a week. I need to eat everything in sight. It's just really bad. And that's when I knew that, like, I definitely had something wrong because I started craving all these sweet foods. And I'm not a sweet person. So when you kind of have signs like that and you just have that relationship with food, it's not a a good way to be. Like, some people might find they get like that after a show. Like, I mean, to be honest, like, with the last one that I had mentally, like, I found it a bit hard. Like, at the start, it was like, a bit of a struggle but then I kind of pulled myself back in and just remembered like what that kind of does to you so look like I'm definitely not perfect and you're still learning and everything all the time about your body but um it's definitely a challenge and that's why nah, no more of those cheats no more cheat meals <laughs> it's just, it doesn't it doesn't work controlled is is definitely a lot better because you know what you're doing especially leading into a show especially yeah show. and I think like I've said to a client, a client asked me the other day if she could have a cheat meal instead of a refeed. And like what I structure as a refeed on a client's program is usually either a meal or a day that's higher carbs, usually pretty low fat to replenish replenish muscle glycogen. Also, you know, let her mentally relax. Usually I say go have a meal out. And I said, no, you can't have a cheat meal. And she goes, oh, why? She's 16 weeks out from comp, which seems pretty far away. I said, look, you can have a free meal. And what I mean by a free meal is you can go have a meal a normal portion, order a normal size portion at a restaurant, whatever, like a burger at grilled. And then if you want to go have a, a normal portion of ice cream or whatever, have that. But no, like I'm saying normal portion, because if I had said to her, yeah, you can have a cheat meal, she could have just gone like what you said before and just kept eating until she felt physically ill. Whereas I'm okay with a client having a meal once a week that's not say, she just didn't want to count calories for a meal. She wanted to get off my fitness power for a meal and not have that mental stress of what am I putting in and how do you feel about that would you be okay with your clients doing that too yeah well look I was lucky enough because my show my last couple of shows were so close together um look I completely understand because I felt the same way it was just like logging my food and I think because I was relatively lean still I was just like you know it was just it was mentally it was getting to me a bit so I did that and I would allow myself I just up to I guess more on the lower side of macros and then I would literally like go to grilled and then I would have like um tutti fruity or whatever so I think that that I found that that mentally worked for me and it it just depends on where your clients at you know like you get some clients that will be you know need to lose quite a lot of weight and then some which are uh, kind of cruising in so you can probably be a bit more flexible with them that's what I said to her I go look this might change six or eight weeks out but at the moment it's okay you're on track Yeah, And I think as well, like telling them to actually go out physically for a meal is a really good idea or like having people at their house where they're like sitting down for food rather than like, like the old school mentality where you literally buy everything, fill your pantries and just go and destroy the fridge and cupboards, which is so, 
it's not even a social event. It's like you sit on the couch and feel yeah. sick by yourself. But like, it's it's not something you'd watch, want people to watch. Sitting in front of me, I'm going to eat everything. And I, you know, I laugh because people call them refeeds and I'm like, that ain't a refeed. <laughs> <laughs> That's just all the shit you can cram into your mouth. <laughs> yeah. And I think as well, like you, I always say to clients, like, let's try to get back to how the sense of feeling. Like people forget to think about how they're actually feeling. Like when we go out for a meal and you sit, you know, we obviously we went out for Trace's birthday dinner a few weeks ago and we sit around and you're with your friends and you're enjoying a meal. You're not sitting there thinking about food. Yeah. Like when you sit down to binge through your whole pantry, all you're thinking about is food. So if you're oh. being social and you're feeling like that's a different emotion, something that you're really connecting with and you can enjoy that feeling rather than enjoying the feeling of food, if you know what I mean. Like Yeah, exactly. I mean, obviously, you prepped like your partner as well, Attila, um, for the last show, Mr. Mr. Peach. Um, <laughs> I mean, you both live together. I mean, Attila does work away. How did you find actually coaching and living like in the same household? Because I prepped my housemate, and I found and like it was tough, but it was also good at the same time because you're going through it together. Yeah, well, I'm actually really lucky because he actually listened to everything I say, and I know that sounds weird for a male to do that, especially a partner, but he literally just confided completely in me and was like, yep, yeah, okay, and he did. And he's he's like me, a bit like obsessive compulsive and has to everything has to be spot on. His macros for the day were balanced out better than what mine were. He was like on point with everything. So I'm just lucky that he had that mentality. Um, it was good because we're both just really supportive as well. So as long as you're both supportive, um, then it's quite easy. But yeah, I mean, we're both pretty tired. So I think, honestly think, I don't know, like I've been in the other circumstance where someone has not been and they've like eaten in front of me and stuff and look like I'm okay with that. Like I think it's just after you've been doing it for a long period of time, you just kind of, your goal is more important, I guess. So you kind of forget about all the food and the, the crap and, you know, it's just one thing I guess I've taught myself mentally now is that that food's always going to be there, like, I don't have to eat it all now. Like next week, if I feel like having something like that, I can have that. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, it's totally switching your mentality. But, yeah, doing it together was, it was it was better than what I thought it would be. I thought it would be really hard, but it actually wasn't. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to have that support, like especially in a partner just in general. They don't have to be a bodybuilder, but they just have to be supportive of you and just have a general understanding. And I think that one thing that you have to realise is that people – usually they just don't understand and that's the reason why they can be negative towards things and that's how I kind of address everything even when it comes to social media and stuff is like they just don't understand they're just uneducated in the matter and I just try to explain things yeah I think so like I know that I've had um you know I've actually never dated anyone really in the industry so I've always had to explain it to partners and I'm lucky again that I've had ones that have been pretty supportive, but I know even like dating people before and they've been like, are you allowed to go on a date? This is like off season. And I'm like, well, yeah, like I eat food and they're like, <laughs> and they're like, I eat more than you. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, but you can't get like chicken and like boiled chicken and sweet potato and broccoli at a restaurant. And I'm like, dude, I can eat. Like, it's okay. Like, I think that's the thing, like getting people to understand that we don't live and breathe like what you think you see, like what our, is on our social media is a glimpse of our lives. And exactly, I mean, that's a huge thing. Yeah, know. it's not the be all and end all. And yeah, I mean, I don't want to, we've been chatting for a little while, I don't want to take up too much of your time today because I know how busy you are. Um, but have you got, I guess, any messages you want to get out there, or anything you want to say about upcoming things you're doing to finish up? Um. Well, I guess just messages in terms of sending out to people and I know that we're probably going to get a lot of females that are, are watching this, but in regards to competition prep and everything, just like if you're looking for a coach, I'm not saying pick Alice and I because <laughs> we're both really busy, so that's <laughs> fine, but just find someone that you know that you can trust, that is educated on the matter, like ask them a million questions. If they can't answer your questions and they're not like a coach for you, you know, even if they go, I don't know the answer and get back to you as long as they kind of can respond to you and just make sure that you're kind of comfortable with them. I think that that's a main thing to look for. And as long as they're, your health is their number one priority, then I think you're pretty set as well. Yeah, I think that's a really important point to – listen to the coach in terms of what their outlook on health is rather than their outlook on competing, Yeah, um, you know, and your longer-term result. 
Um, yeah, I mean, thank you so much, Summer, for coming on today. And I'm sure we'll have you on for future episodes and chat about upcoming things and events. And I'm sure we'll be doing more things. Obviously, we're both in, based in Perth. Yeah. Um, and probably even, you know, camps and seminars that I'm sure will liaise on things in the future. And yeah. if you have any questions or future episodes that you'd like me and Summer to chat about, then um, Summer, what's your best point of email contact? Uh, just the info at summerbernard.com. Perfect. Cool. So I'll put all your links, also your Facebook, Instagram, everything in the bio. And thank you so much for listening to another episode. Thank you Bye. for having me. Thank you, Summer. <laughs>